as you can tell by the title of the video, we are going to be talking about self-care today. I know a lot of times we think of that in the form of, you know, maybe getting your nails done, your hair done, going to the spa, getting a massage, and that is completely fine. But for me, self-care extends far beyond that. I tend to think of it as a way in which helps me kind of reset and organize my life and to me it really looks like extending it to the point of you know bringing order into your life organizing your thoughts um cleaning your space nourishing your body nourishing your mind paying attention to the things that you consume sometimes we have to dial back and reset and so today i kind of want to talk about the rituals that I have that I do basically every single week to kind of just set the tone for the upcoming week or the upcoming month because I have a lot of things going on whatever it may be that week to just kind of let me see okay let's take a step back look at everything and then proceed and also to kind of just start fresh start new you know life is crazy it throws you all types of curveballs and I think everybody can attest to needing a fresh start at some point in their week, their life, wherever it may be. And these things I found have just really helped me plan accordingly, get back on track, and motivate me to keep going at a steady pace. So, so let's just go ahead and get into the video. We're going to talk about the rituals that I do for self-care to kind of just reset and start fresh um, and I hope they help you guys so the first thing we're gonna talk about is nourishing your body I don't know about you guys but for me when I eat a lot of junk food when I eat a lot of fast food I can just tell I begin to feel sluggish tired I have a lot of brain fog sometimes I'll be moody and I've started to notice that food is not supposed to make you feel tired food is supposed to be nourishing to your body and a lot of times if i'm eating something heavy 10 out of 10 it's going to make me feel tired and so in order to combat that i like to keep a lot of whole foods in the house um i like to cook a let me actually rephrase that i do not like to cook i use hello fresh um but i don't like to cook a lot of, I, actually I don't cook any fried foods. I don't like to cook a lot of fried foods or heavy foods. Typically all of my meals are healthy that I cook. All of my meals are healthy that I cook. Um, I don't bring junk food into the house because if I do, I'm gonna skip right past the vegetables and the fruits and I'm gonna go to Hot Cheetos because that's like my guilty pleasure. When I go grocery shopping, I buy a lot of fruit produce, a lot of things that I, I'm a snacker. So I like to keep a lot of like fruits, strawberries, berries, grapes, things that I can just kind of grab and grow, go. And as most of you guys know, I'm a nurse. I work night shift. That is a killer for you when it comes to snacks because you know if you work night shift, somebody always bring in something. And so I like to keep healthy snacks on hand at night um, just so that I don't have to reach for the donuts or the cookies or whatever the patient's family brought because they wanted to reward us for the help that we had given their family members. Um, I also like to cook healthy meals, healthy breakfast. Um, I just feel like it nourishes my body. It makes me feel good. And it also makes me feel, feel good about the choices that I'm making. If I am craving, let's say, Popeyes, but I decide to make salmon instead, it's like I'm patting myself on the back like, good job, Shannon. I'm proud of you for not getting that. I'm proud of you for making better decisions. And I can honestly say, you know, when I have a week of just eating clean, I feel so good about myself. So what I've learned to do is just snap on the thing mm. that feel good to me, taste good to me, bring me joy. Um, healthy food doesn't have to be nasty, it doesn't have to be bad. I love using seasoning without the salt. Um, I love dabbing in your herbs, and that's why I love HelloFresh, because they give you a variety of things. My breakfast food, I love eating fruit in the morning. I love my salmon toast. Um, I just started making like an avocado tomato bacon toast that I absolutely love. So the idea is to just really feed my body with nourishing things. We are running around day to day Concept 
nourishing food, wholesome food, you need to help with them. Next, I want to talk about cleaning your space. I think we kind of underestimate what a clean space can do for you mentally. I know for me, when I clean my house, I just feel at peace. When I come home to a clean home, it, it just brings a sense of calm over me. But when I have stuff laying around everywhere, not cleaned up, it just adds to my anxiety. It adds to the clutter that is in my mind. And so I make it a priority. I do have days where I'm just coming and going and I kind of just lay stuff down, but it just it never stays like that for long because I just cannot function like that. I cannot function in a house that doesn't have order, that is not clean, that is not organized. I just can't function like that. And so I make it a priority to clean up weekly and I clean something daily. Something maybe the countertops or you know, I might go in the bathroom and wipe it down. Or I vacuum every single day because I have a dog and just us tracking in and out of the house every day. I just make it a, a, a priority to clean up some part of my house every day. And then I'll also hire a cleaner, um, which helps me because my life is kind of all over the place, busy, running a business, working full time, um, doing YouTube. And so hiring a cleaner for me was a luxury that I probably will never get rid of because it saves me so much time to have somebody come in and deep clean my house every two weeks or once a month so that I can focus on other tasks. Because cleaning takes a lot of time if you clean properly. It's not like a, oh, I'm gonna clean for like five, 10 minutes and keep it moving. Like actually cleaning a full house takes time. But clean, uh, coming home to a clean house, just it just renews my spirit. It just makes me feel good about life. Like, when it's smelling good, it's looking good, everything is in order, I just love a clean home. Next thing that I love to do, and which is a game changer for me, is a brain dump. Um, for most of you guys do not know, I own a med spa, I do YouTube, I work full time as a nurse, I have a personal life, and so there are so many things going on in my mind. It is impossible for me to just kind of keep up just based off of memory alone. I don't know how people do it without having a planner. I've had a planner since I can remember. If I don't write it down, it does not exist to me. And so what I like to do typically every week and once a month, the beginning of a new month, is I like to have a brain dump. I will write down any and everything I can think of, even if it's things that do not matter right now, because what'll happen is I'll look at that list and I'll schedule the things out throughout the week and throughout the month and whatever is not on there I'll just come back to but sometimes if I don't write it down right now and it's maybe six months from now maybe it's me planning a trip but a trip is not really a priority maybe I have other things that are higher on the totem pole I will forget about it and that list allows me to go back look at it assess it and be like oh okay yeah I remember we were supposed to do that we were supposed to take care of this um get that done and I like to prioritize things um I have a system where there are things that need to get done right now um there are things that can wait two to three days out there are things that can be planned throughout the week and maybe there are things that need to get done within a month or two where we can kind of work on it throughout the month um, a brain dump is essential to my life. And so when my brain dump, I'll have things on there from my goals to appointments, um, spending time with friends. It just helps me organize everything, give the things a, a time frame and a new day to get done. Planners are game changers for me. I do not think I will ever stop using one. And there are different types of planners. I am a like pen and paper girl, so my planner is the actual book. I'll put the link down below. I've been using this planner for like four or five years, probably longer than that, a very long time. Um, and I also keep my planners because I like to go back and look and see kind of like what I was doing with my life at that time. And so planning for me is a game changer, it's essential, it is non-negotiable. If I want to get my life in order, if I want to reset things, if I want to plan out accordingly, I need to write everything down and then that helps set the tone for what I have planned for. The game changer for me when it comes to self-care is moving my body. 
Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard like an idol. Mine is the Devil's Playground, and that is so true to me because when I am in a rut, I tend to overthink and I absolutely do nothing. Like literally, don't like don't even leave my bed, do nothing. And so I have noticed that when I'm going through phases like that, it is imperative that I get up and I move my body for me to get in order for me to get out of my rut or if I'm overwhelmed or if I just have a lot of anxiety going on to move my body to get them those endorphins flowing um I'm not a big person on working out I absolutely do not like it but I love the way it makes me feel after I am done I love the results when I'm consistent I love when I'm done I feel like I was disciplined like you did that because it is not easy to go work out it, it is extremely hard for me I just don't enjoy it at all I know it is something that makes me feel good once I'm done doing it also even going out for a walk I now that is something that I can do I can walk all day um hiking and walking those are two of my favorite things it's a little bit cold where I'm at right now um but that's still not an excuse especially on a sunny day I will gear up with all my clothes on and get out of here and go for a walk and just let the sun hit my skin it also helps that I have a dog so it forces me to get outside every single day um but it's just so imperative that we move our body just the monotony of just me going to work is not enough because people always say like oh you're a nurse I know you're on your feet all the time but your body I don't want to say your body gets used to it because nursing does a number on your body after a while just that consistency of your body kind of just adjusts so it's not like you know your first day of nursing versus your hundred and whatever day um your body just kind of adjusts to it so it's imperative and my doctor kind of told me this because I'm like I'm a nurse I'm always on my feet and he's just like but your body has adjusted to that you know I know it's a lot of work and you're tired you're not working out different muscles each time like your body has got adjusted to pushing and pulling and always being on the go you need to do stuff where you are working out different muscles so go outside and go for a walk a brisk walk um walk up some hills go hiking go exercise go cycling whatever you do just move your body when i am trying to reset when i'm trying to get things in order it is imperative for me to get up and move my body stretch i love stretching i love doing yoga i love walking these are all things that just refreshes my body opens up my joints and my muscles and pulls me and stretches me i just love it doing those little simple things makes a world of difference in how i feel when i'm going through a rut or i have a lot on my plate and i'm a little bit overwhelmed just taking a step back and just doing something for my body whether that's exercising going for a walk going for a hike cycling whatever it may be stretching yoga find what it is that you enjoy and, and try things out um but find things that you enjoy that you can dabble into just to move your body so this one right here um i know i've been saying all of them are a game changer but this one seriously is a game changer and that is staying off of social media i have kind of curated my feed where anything that i come across is something that i truly enjoy so if you go follow me on instagram which you should i don't follow a lot of people my list of follower people that i follow is very curated to what i enjoy i actually don't even follow a lot of my friends like if you don't post anything i'm not just about to be following you to follow you to just take up space i follow a lot of self-help like therapists i follow a lot of like fashion girls i follow a few youtubers that i love their the quality of their content um i follow like a lot of like people who are good at like editing and stuff like that but it is very curated although it is very curated instagram always finds a way to sneak things in that i don't necessarily need to even be paying attention to and so and so i have found that it is imperative that i take social media breaks thankfully i am not big to the point where social media is actually my job 
but if and when that does come i know that i'm going to have to set even more stronger boundaries but as of now i have the freedom to come and go on social media as i please if y'all do follow me y'all will see like i'll get into a routine of like posting or like i'll just pop out of nowhere and just like post consistently and then i'll stop and that's because i just need a break i need a break from paying attention to everybody else's life and i just need to focus on mine and sometimes i know that we should not compare even though my feed is very curated um if somebody is on a vacation while i'm over here stressed out going through it like sometimes that's not what i want or need to see and so i have learned that it is it, it is very important for me to take a step back from social media we live in a world today where you know everything about everybody you know what they ate for breakfast you know when their mama just got remarried you know when their boyfriend cheated on them you know it's just like information overload and when you have a lot of stuff going on it can just be too much. It can just be absolutely too much. I don't care if it's not your, your, if you don't know them or not, sometimes it's just imperative to take a step back, pull yourself back from what the world has going on and just focus on you. And so on those, in those times when I have social media breaks, I love to read. I, I like if you were in my home right now, I have books everywhere. I am an avid reader. And sometimes I can be on social media, it's crazy. Like you can go down a rabbit hole and look up and it's a whole entire hour has went by and you're like, damn, what did I do? And so I have made it my business instead of, I, first of all, I have set a limit on my social media time on my phone. So I only get two hours out of a day. And honestly, I think that is too much, but once those two hours hit, I'm done. I don't care what I was looking at, who I was talking to, whatever the case may be. If I've went over my two hours, I'm done. So I have set a boundary with that. But also, when I, a lot of times I get on social media because I don't want to think. I don't want to think about what's going on in my life. And so with social media, all you do is scroll, 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 scroll. It doesn't require any type of thought, honestly. And so a lot of times when I don't want to think about what's going on in my life, I get on social media. But I have set another boundary with myself. Instead of getting on social media, I will pick up a book. So I always have a book nearby that I am reading. Um, so reading, I love doing puzzles, cleaning, taking a bath. I love music. Music is like my love language. I love just putting on some music and just like vibing out. But the point that I'm making is that I take a step back from social media and I just focus on me. That is it. It doesn't have to be a hardcore focus like, hey, let's get our life together, but more so just spending time with myself and not spending time watching everybody else's life. That could be, like I said, it could be reading. It could be taking myself out, going to lunch, spending time with my friends. We've kind of lost that connection of being in each other's presence. And I know it's the pandemic and all that stuff, but even before that, social media didn't just happen in the last year years it's been here and so i try to really be conscious of how i spend my time because it's just not healthy to be on social media all day every day i tend to do that when i'm at work too if i have some downtime i'm on social media scrolling or after i pass my meds i just want to sit down for a second and not think and eat my snacks and i've had to set that boundary at work as well like hey if you have free time at work let's work on this business let's complete this goal let's look into that let's not get on social media so that has been a game changer for me because social media just posts everybody's highlight reel and if your life is not what you feel like it should be or you have a lot going on it is very easy to see somebody on vacation or see somebody posting about whatever it may be and kind of look at your life and lack or feel like you don't have it together and that's when I have to be real with myself I have to dial back and say okay let's take a break from this and so social media is one of those things that I have set a, a clear boundary with because there are so many things that I am trying to accomplish I don't have time to allow something like this to put me in a space that is making me feel inadequate or less than so that is the end of the video i truly hope that you enjoyed it you took away some pointers from the video and also let me know what do you guys do besides the normal like getting your hair done your nails done going from 
massage and spa type thing with self-care oh. um are you guys planners do you kind of detach from the world and just kind of focus on yourself tell me what you guys do because i'm looking to add a few more things going to my self-care reset rituals like meditation i have started dabbling into that it's not something that i have been doing for long maybe two or three weeks and i have seen the benefits but i want to like really work my way into it before i say like oh this is something that is like a, a must for me um but yeah tell me what you guys thought tell me what were your your reset rituals that you live by when you're having rough days when you're overwhelmed these are the things that i do to kind of pull it all together so i'll see you guys in the next video